This video is part of series covering IGCLC computer science topics. In this video, we will talk about loop structures. We have already discussed loop structures in our previous video. So let's recap and see more examples. So first kind of loop we are going to discuss is for loop. For loop is used whenever number of repeats or iteration is fixed. So this is very important point that number of iterations are supposed to be fixed in for loop and it stops whenever the number of iteration is complete. So it is very useful when you are making list of top 10 cities, when you are making list of top students, when you are making list of anything. So for loop is very good to be used. Here I have an example of for loop. We have a variable named counter and we have another variable name student name so we have two variables which are going to be used in this loop as you can see for loop is using the counter and the counter is not being changed anywhere else so it is very important whichever variable you use for the loop whichever variable you use for counting the number of repetitions for counting the number of iterations should not be changed anywhere else to be on the safe side otherwise your program will produce a bug probably something like that so let's see the output when we run the program first the counter is set to 1 and it, it outputs the enter the name of student so suppose I give the name John so whenever I input provide the input the input will go into a list that is named as student name so the list will contain John that is the only name it has so it will again ask me to enter a name similarly it will say enter the name of student it will print this again and again like okay like that and now I'll enter Rida so whenever I enter the next name it will go to the next position in the list so that was Rida so you see now counter is 2 counter is automatically incremented in the for loop it will again ask me to enter the name uh, and I say I say Sheila so I know these are very stupid names uh, not that stupid but uh, these are the only names <laughs> and that comes up in my mind so in the third place it has Sheila and the counter is now three and it will again ask you so I'm not writing all the output here but actually it will print this again and again so it will again ask me for the name of student and I'll say um, I'll say Hafsa so the Hafsa will move to the fourth position in the counter and the counter is four so you see here the counter is automatically incremented when the counter was one the name was John so the John is put at the first position when the counter was two the name was Rida so Rida was put on the second position so you see counter is also defining the position on the list as well so when I have 10 names in the list the counter will automatically stop next kind of loop is repeat until repeat until loop is very useful when number of iterations are unknown but at least once the task is required at least once you have to do the thing and this loop will stop whenever the condition is true because condition is checked at the end after the until part condition is checked so for example when you ask the user to enter marks to calculate the total so user have to at least give you something it a uh, user has to at least provide you one or two marks or like that so let's see an example for this kind of loop in this example there are multiple variables for example there is a total variable there is a mark variable. in the beginning total is set to zero and mark is also set to zero when you run the program the output will be like uh, uh, so first of all actually it will rep uh, the repeat process starts by calculating the total again so total is equal to total plus mark so it will remain zero as zero plus zero is also equal to zero then it will ask the user to enter value for mark and minus one to finish so if I'm the user I give it 20 marks so what it will do it will take 20 into the variable named mark so after this my mark is 20 
and it say until mark is minus one it will again check the condition if mark is minus one then it will stop but mark is not minus one it's 20 so it will stop uh, it will not stop and will move again to the first step where it is calculating the total now the total is total plus mark so total plus mark 0 plus 20 is also equal to 20 so again it will ask me to enter the value and uh, suppose I I'm again giving it 20 so what it'll do it will again take the 20 in the mark mark is already 20 so uh, suppose it has updated to the mark now it will check that if mark is equal to minus one so mark is not equal to minus one so it will repeat the process again when it goes back to the repeat here total should now be equal to total plus mark again so total is already 20 20 plus this 20 is equal to 40 the program will again ask for the mark suppose now i say uh, minus one i want to finish it i just want the total of two marks so i want to finish it so now it will take minus one in the variable named mark and it will again check that if mark is equal to minus one so now the condition is true mark is equal to minus one so this reputation and this repeat process is stopped now next type of loop is while do and while loop so while the condition is true do the iteration and and while if condition is not true so if this loop is used when number of iteration is unknown like the above loop but here in while loop the program is not required to repeat a, any instruction at least even once this loop will stop when condition is false you know the meaning when you see the problem so we will take the example like the above one here we are again asking the user to enter marks to find total but we are similar uh, at the meantime we are saying that enter minus one if you do not want the total so if the user enters minus one we are not going to repeat that so uh, it will be more clear when you see the example this problem has also two variables like the previous one total and mark initially first of all total is set to zero and then this will print that the statement if you want uh, enter value for the mark and minus one to finish so the user will enter something for example i have entered 15. so it will check if mark is minus one if mark is not minus one so this is a special symbol used in pseudocode to represent inequality so it says while the mark is not minus one do the following so you can see i have uh, mark entered 15 mark is 15 15 is really not equal to minus one so now it will calculate the total so now total is 0 plus 15 which is again equal to 15 it will again print enter value for the mark and minus one to finish now i'll give it 20 so it will input 20 into the variable named mark and again go back to the while and check if the condition is true or not the condition is true mark is still not equal to minus one so it will again repeat the process it will again calculate the total so now total is 45 uh, no actually it's 35 and it will again print enter value for the mark and minus one to finish suppose i say i'll enter five and five will be stored in the variable name mark it will again check if mark is equal to minus one or not mark is not equal to minus one the condition is true so it will do uh, the calculation for the total now total is increased to 40 will again ask me for the mark and i'll now i'll say minus one so mark uh, is now minus one and it will check the condition if mark is equal to minus one or not now this condition is not true mark the condition which says mark is not equal to minus one is false mark is actually equal to minus one so the when the condition is false it will stop it will go to the end while and do whatever comes these two examples are quite similar they are solving one problem 
by having two different approaches here we have initialized the total from zero we are asking for the value of mark we are taking the input into the variable named mark then checking if the input is minus one or not then checking if the user wants to repeat the process or not but here we are not checking anything at the beginning we are asking for the mark inside the loop and then checking if the user wants to repeat or not so th basically that's the difference that's the only difference and another difference is here uh, the condition is checked at the beginning of loop and if the condition is true it will repeat the process if condition is false it will stop the process and here condition is checked at the end and now the condition is checked if it is false it will repeat the process if it is true it will stop so the condition part is actually opposite of one another and uh, the other thing is you you are taking the input into the repeat for the first time uh, while here you are taking the input outside the loop for the first time so that was all about the loops i hope you have understood it in the next video we will we will solve few examples with the loops and we will see why the loops are being used and we will write the example in a standard pseudocode format keep watching